we are back this time with the WNBA All-Star, New York Liberty's own Benaja Laney. Welcome to our big comfy couch. How have you been enjoying your time in Cleveland? Uh, I mean, so far it's been really fun. You know, besides the cold weather and the crazy travel issues um, that I had in to endure, it's been really good. So what have you been doing since you've been here? Well, this morning I um, had the NBA Portrait Media Day. So took a bunch of photos, which I love doing. She's giving model. I <laughs> uh, did a bunch of uh, interviews kind of things. Um, from there, I went to a, the legendary panel where they, um, at a rec center, the Cavs donated the NBA, helped out um, three rooms. Three, They renovated three rooms in there. So that was really nice. It was like a meditation room, a reading room, a game room. So that was pretty cool to, to see in the city. Tell me about your WNBA All-Star experience. Well, it's very different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, relax. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it was fun, you know, to just experience um, all the festivities and everything, be amongst other all-stars, just, you know, in the presence of a lot of great people. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it, you know, and we, we played against Team USA, and that was fun. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot different, though. We did not have all of this. But in a non-COVID uh, all-star, yeah. maybe it'll be, you know, similar. So take me back to a baby B and tell us about your life as a child and when you decided to start playing basketball. Basketball up until I was about 10, 11 years old. That's okay. when I got started. I was really bad Just and cheering. I hated it. <laughs> um, before that, I used to cheerlead and dance. I did ballet, tap and jazz and I loved it. But once I got older and, you know, started to become really good at basketball, I was like, oh, I think I'm going to choose this because, you know, I had to dedicate my time to be what I wanted to be to one. And so, you know, went on, played AAU, was recruited, went to college, got drafted, and I'm now in my sixth year. Yeah, you are. Um, just finished my sixth year, going into my seventh um, with the New York Liberty. But it's definitely been a journey. Uh, being drafted to Chicago, I tore my ACL really early in my second year. Uh, couldn't play that season. The next season still wasn't ready, so ended up being waived. And then kind of bounced around a little bit. Got to Indiana, was waived again, right before the bubble year. And went to the bubble with Atlanta and became, you know, the most improved player in the WNBA, which was really fun, especially, you know, coming off of that situation. Um, and then now, you know, I'm in New York, and I'm loving it. Look, I'm rewinding back to a baby B, <laughs> right, with cheerleading and dance. How does that help you train for basketball? Or what, what parallels do you have with cheerleading and, and dance to basketball? I think, well, with dance specifically, more like footwork mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, with cheerleading, just, just the movements, you know, just being graceful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even though I'm a bit, you know, um, more on the rough side. Not you calling yourself rough. <laughs> Not you, not you being rough on, on the, the court, stage. On the court. <laughs> but you have been around to different teams in yes. the league. And I always like to say the WNBA is all about fit, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's insanely talented. It's just about fit. So when you, I want you to talk about your mentality or the mental processing you had to do when you got cut from Indiana or away from Indiana. And then how were you able to get back on the court and come back stronger? I mean, like you said, it's all about fit and opportunity. You know, um, I've always prepared myself for whatever opportunity I was given. And I think that that's what kept me ready, you know, in that moment when I got my calling to just continue to stay ready, continue to work, you know, regardless of anything else that was that was going on. I stayed ready and true to what I was doing, you know, always pushing myself to want to wanna grow and get better. And so I think that that's kind of what landed me in Atlanta, because everyone knows if you know I'm on a team, like I work hard, regardless yeah. of whether you're gonna give me the opportunity to display anything or not, there's one thing that I do and that's work hard. So once I got to in Atlanta and she just saw everything that I was about, she just gave me the green light and I just took off from there. But then you went to New York. Yes. What is New York basketball like? It's, it's me, like it's gritty, it's tough, you know? Um, it's resilient, so it was, being in New York is very, very fitting for me. I think I'm a, a New Yorker at heart, even though I'm not from there. Um, and so I, I just love it. I love everything that we're about. I want to go back to mental health because a lot of times with injuries, we face um, not even timidness. It's just, it's just a different mentality that you have to have to come back from an injury. And you, you've, had, you've had your fair share. Yes. So how are you able to compartmentalize or 
cope with it and push through to become even better? I think just trust in the process, you know, because it, it's a long process, especially coming off of ACL. Um, I was out for about a year and a half, but just in the, that moment, I was able to realize how much I really missed basketball mm -hmm. and everything that I was going to do to, to get back. So, you know, it was tough. And I had days I woke up and I'm like, why am I doing this? Or, you know, oh, my goodness, I'm not getting better. But, you know, I just had to keep going. And luckily for me, I had a, a great support system, you know, with my family, my friends, the organization, you know, everybody that I was surrounded with. They, you know, there would be days where <laughs> my, my PT, she doesn't play basketball at all, but she would just get out there with me so that I yeah. could enjoy it, you know? So I think a lot of that helped. It was really the support system. And then just, again, knowing where I wanted to get to and doing any and everything that I could to, to get me back there. And, you know, I, I still deal with it. I just had another surgery, you know, last November. Yep. But just continuing to, to push and do everything that I can to, to make sure that I'm feeling good, healthy, and ready to get back out there. Who is Bitnaja Laney? I'm an introvert until I come out my shell and I'm, you know, just comfortable. I just love good people, you know, and if I just feel, if I'm not feeling it, then I'm just, you know, you, more reserved than Silent, myself. dead silent. <laughs> She'd be like... But that's okay because I'm introverted too and I understand completely. But what, what brings you balance to your life? Prayer. Mm. Prayer. I think it's easy to like, you know, go one way or the other. And in those moments when I'm like low, you know, I got to pray because I need to get my mind right. And when I'm high, you know, just being thankful in that, in that prayer. So for me, it's definitely prayer. What is your history that you contribute to the world? I think being a role model. I think just being someone that young girls can look up and relate to, someone that they can see and be like, oh, that could be me too, you know? So um, I think being a role model, giving back to the community, that's something that I, that I love to do, to just be somebody that little girls, little black girls, you know, can look up to. I love that. Is there any one particular moment with a fan that you remember and you'll keep with you forever? There is this little girl. <laughs> She, she had my jersey, and she was waiting for me. And usually after a game, I take so long because I'm like, I have you media do. or, I, you know, I got I to gotta take care of my body, especially with these injuries. So I'm usually at the gym for like an extra hour and a half, and she waited like about two hours for me to come out. And I had no idea, but like, you know, no one was upset. She was just like so happy for me to be there. And I was like, oh, my goodness, like <laughs> crazy because I would never do that. But um, to just know that, like, you know, there is someone who's like, oh, my goodness, like, I have to get to her because of, you know, the things that I do and who I am, um, you know, that's just kind of special. Any fan questions we have out here in the crowd for B? I want to ask you what it is like when you go out on the court dominating and having confidence, when you don't feel like that confident, how you get that confidence to go out and compete the way you do? You know, I think my teammates have a lot to do with it. You know, I, I know I'm confident and I'm ready because I prepare for those moments. But if you know the New York Liberty, if you've ever seen them on the sidelines, they are like the most hype. They just they give you a lot of confidence. Yeah. And so just, just looking at them and they're like, yeah, like, let's go be work, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Um, for me, that gives me like, like a lot of confidence. So I'm like, OK, like I got y'all. So do you have like an embarrassing sports moment? Not her instantly chuckling. <laughs> okay, so when I was little, like, I was really bad. Like, I was so bad. And so I remember, like, I'm running up the court. I probably shot, like, two, three air balls in a row. But I'm like, I, want, I need this to go in. And so my coach ended up taking me out. So I go out on, like, the, the, on the sideline. And I'm, like, sitting there. And I'm like, okay, now I'm bored. <laughs> and I, I had this cup. And I was looking at something, and then it like just all like went out on my face. <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing, but also funny. And yeah. you know, I want to thaw out in Cleveland. If I want to get my blood, you know, warm to a song, what you listening to right now? Give a, give us something you listening to. Right now, oh my goodness! Right now, I'm like loving Tim's. Okay. Yeah, I'm no, I've Tim's. been Tim's Essentials all day. Yeah. Tim's That's what I'm listening to all day. Yes. And it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be us if we didn't acknowledge Coach C. Vivian Stringer. So I need a bar or a gym she's ever dropped um, to you, advice, a word that stuck with you. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you wanted me to like No, I don't need you to rap. I just told you I was an introvert and you got me up here I'm not going to have you rap like that. <laughs> Coach Stringer, she 
she really believes in the power of black women. Mm-hmm. And she wanted us to to embody that, you know. So she always put us in the in the best position. But I think for her, the way that I am now, just like with my appearance and all of that, like she did that in a way. Like, you know what I mean? She yeah. was like, you are a black woman, you are strong, and you need to go out and, and be that, you know, through what you're doing, who you are, and, and what you look like. Speaking of, like, you know, we got to do the fit check. Come on, stand up. Give us a little sum, a little sum. Over the shoulder, period. <laughs> Thank you, Ben Naja. 